Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Dame D.C. Cordova, and I am CEO of Accelerate Business Schools and the Money in You program. And I am so excited today to welcome you, all those of you around the world that are going to be watching this series. This is the Accelerated Humanitarian Series. And there are many of us who are very excited to be doing this because this is our way to contribute to you, the contributors. The first thing that I want to do is I want to really thank you and acknowledge you for your work. I know that all of you listening to this are working very, very hard. You have a beautiful heart. And what you want to do is you want to make a big difference out there. And many of you have given up a lot of things to be doing your organizations a lot of sacrifices, not only financially, but also with family and time and traveling and doing many, many things. So let me just give you a little bit of an overall of this particular event, events that we're going to be doing. I will be doing this first one, the official first one uh, to start, and giving you an overview of how to build an organization, a socially responsible organization. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think of yourself as a business. And this is really important because I have been working with humanitarians for many, many years. Our organization has been around for over 35 years. Uh, we have a program called the Money and You program for three and a half days. And then we have a program called the Accelerated Business School for Entrepreneurs which is eight days long, and then we have a ninth day, which is a big networking event with trade shows and a lot of the graduates that come back and hang out with the new graduates. So we're quite a busy bunch, and uh, we do quite a few programs in the Asia-Pacific region, in North America, and expanding into the Hispanic markets. So what I would like to do is I would like to pass along to you some of the most important pieces that I have learned through the years that a nonprofit and or a humanitarian organization really needs to know in order for them to be successful. And there are going to be times when I'm going to be speaking quite a bit about money. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to hang out with me in any uncomfortableness that comes up for you around the word money, around finances, around funds. And uh, we are going to be bringing a speaker probably um, you know, in a few sessions that will have an opportunity with you to help you clear around money. I might do it or I might bring one of my friends. I am very blessed. I'm one of the elders now in the transformational business uh, entrepreneurial field. And so I know just about everybody that you can think of. And uh, I, I want to bring some of them in to help you, to support you, and for you to be willing to really expand to a whole other level. Because I have never met a humanitarian, an organization uh, that was doing really, really well that the leader didn't have to go through some pretty amazing steps in order for them to expand their deservability their ability for them to really allow themselves to receive a lot of money and to be known, uh, to write a book, to be on television, to be pitching people. So for all intents and purposes, we're going to treat your organization right now as a business. And so what I did was, uh, for this particular presentation, I am going to go over what we call uh, the business success model, but it has been adapted to working with nonprofits, with humanitarians. So it's a little, a little bit different than what you may have seen or may see in the future, but it is completely designed for you. And what I like to do is I like to recommend that you really do study this. And at the end, I'm going to give you a link to one of our websites, and I can tell you right now what it is, is moneyandyou.com for you to download the four session business makeover and if you watch this many years from now and that particular uh, four session um, business makeover is no longer on our website make sure that you write to us admin at accelerated.com and uh, we will make sure that we send you a copy of it is four recordings and you'll have an opportunity to listen to some magnificent business education. So 
Um, one of the things that I like to do is I like to give you a little example. There's a wonderful woman by the name of Susan Barton. Susan Barton is the creator and the founder of an organization called the Lighthouse Foundation. They are um, stationed in Melbourne, Australia. It wouldn't take very long for you to Google it. And you can also go to moneyandyouradio.com, moneyandyouradio.com. And I would love for you to listen to that interview. Susan Barton is one of our most successful nonprofit organizations that we have gotten behind. But we have gotten behind quite a few of them. There are some that are no longer around. Um, and uh, there are others that, like the Genie, G-E-N-I dot org. That's a renewable energy. That's a Buckminster Fuller resources and really talking about the world grid, which was, was one of the assignments that Buckminster Fuller, our great mentors, left us behind. And so, and, and then there's others. We have a whole list that I can provide to you of organizations that we have supported. There's many, many, many. And, but I'm going to speak for a minute about the Lighthouse Foundation because Susan Barton was someone in the 80s that we met in uh, Sydney, Australia at the time. And she was a, a beautiful young woman that her heart would break every time she would be around children that were homeless. And she was living not far from a place that used to, that is called King's Cross in Sydney, Australia, which in the 80s was the center, the mecca of prostitution, of drugs, and of things that were unthinkable. And uh, she would literally pick children up from that area and take them to her little apartment, her little flat, as they call them in Australia. And uh, we ran into her. Somebody recommended her to come and meet us. I don't know who it was. I'm sure that after this comment, somebody, if they, they know they're going to get in touch with me, and I would love to know who it was. And we invited her to our Money and You program first, and then she attended all of our accelerated programs, including the business school, the instructor's training program, our high-impact presentations program, which at the time used to be called Powerful Presentations. And then she did uh, some of our other advanced programs and completely immersed herself in business. To make a long story short, she ended up um, really being able through many donations of the Money and New graduates, business school graduates, and the support of getting educated, of really expanding her mindset. She was able to bring a whole team and ended up having a huge foundation, which the last time I saw her, oh, probably about six years ago in Melbourne, Australia, she had a huge building. She is impacting so many young people, still homeless children. Unfortunately, those challenges have not been eradicated yet, so she still has a lot of work to do. But the children that she had adopted are now in their 30s and 40s, and they are extremely successful because they learn business from her, and she continues to just expand and grow her nonprofit organization. And so that's why I wanted you to go to moneyandyourradio.com and listen to her interview. And she will share and really acknowledge quite a bit of our technology, but also she was helped by many people. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the foundation, and I want to welcome you to this series. And then, of course, anything that we can do to continue to support you, I know that we're going to be meeting you from around the world. This will be translated into many languages. The deal that I have um, with people, and it was interesting because this series came out of us going to Cancun through the Transformational Leadership Council, which I'm one of the co-founders of that organization, which started about 10 years ago, Jack Canfield and a whole group of other people that were transformational leaders, you know, John Gray of um, Mars and Venus fame and other people, started this group. We started this group to support each other. And through, uh, we always like to contribute to people. And when we went to Cancun, um, through a series of circumstances, I decided to start this mastermind. So this is being originally done for the group in Cancun. 
and I got together with them and began to train them and then I began to share some of the information but now it's more formalized and, um, and one of the things that I want to do with all of you I want to ask you a big favor that you really do statistics and we'll be talking about statistics in a few sessions but what I like you to do is to begin to keep statistics on how you are doing today how many people you're contributing to and if you're just starting out you know it could be zero it could be one it could be five it could be thousands we'd like to know those numbers and we'd like to, for you to keep track for you to keep statistics and if you don't know how to do that because you are a humanitarian you are involved in contributing to others you will find some business masters that can help you and tell them to put statistical analysis systems in place that possibly they can run for you so you can keep track of how well you're doing and I want to know how you are I want to know how you're doing I some of you I'm gonna know for the rest of my life some of you I'll just be able to contribute to you through online education may never meet you but know that in my heart of hearts and in the hearts of my whole organization and I particularly want to thank Anne Vier right now because she is the one that's helping me with the production of this particular event and she will have an opportunity to speak to you later on how to use television how to use Google Hangouts how to use technology in order for you to expand your work so you'll get to know Anne Devere but I'd like to thank you Anne for taking the time to be my production manager <laughs> of this event today and uh, for us to pass the word so what I'm going to do, we're going to be going in and out of me speaking to you, but we're going to have a PowerPoint presentation. And so, uh, because this is a Google Hangout, it will be online for many years to come, and you'll have an opportunity to see this over and over again, which, of course, we'd like you to do. So, go ahead and let's put up the first slide, Anne. Technology just takes a couple of minutes, but it's coming. And pretty much the first slide is going to be just me introducing you to the subject today, which is really how to grow, how to create, how to grow, and how to expand a socially responsible organization. And I want you to start really thinking of yourself as a business, okay? Because even though we may not be talking about profits, we are going to be talking about the ability for you to be able to grow it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go through is what is your purpose? And you can see our purpose, that's the purpose of our organization. Sometimes people get a little bit confused because they think that I'm a nonprofit organization. I actually don't have one. At this moment, I don't have one. And the reason I don't is because I churn out a lot of social entrepreneurs I have a highly profitable organization and one of the things that I do is that I go to many of our graduates and I encourage them to start their own organization or to support other organizations so that's easier it's not like me raising money for my own that has worked very well for me for the last 35 years but one of these days as I'm getting ready to expand more into the renewable energy businesses and other businesses I may start one but at this particular moment I sending people to other organizations that I know that I can trust okay so the next slide is going to be about what is your mission and you can see on your screen that there is my mission and my mission is actually um, I have several missions because I have several businesses but the one in my heart and has been in my heart for many years is for me to really transform educational systems around the world to eradicate poverty and hunger now just so you know there's a lot of people behind me I am not by myself we have promoters around the world we have business partners we have organizations that we partner up with there's a whole slew of us that are working on this so it's not just me but for the purposes of this particular presentation, I'm going to be talking about my, my, my a lot. And I mean our, our, our. Okay? So let's go on to the next one. So um, these particular slides are going to be available to you through this Hangout. 
but also you might see it when you when you attend money and you and and if you are bona fide you know a nonprofit organization we have a special prize for you to attend our program so you just any questions that you have you go to admin a d m i n at accelerated.com that's spelled e x c e l l e r a t e d dot com you just let me know if there's any way we can support you i have had that email address for 20 years so i doubt that this is going to change very soon so you you can see this you know many many years from now and i probably will still have that address and you can always find me dc cordova dot com and uh, even if i decide to leave this world I'm sure that site will stay up and my friends will be able to you know, show it to you. Okay, so the next one, what I want to do is I want to start talking about what we call in our organization the business success model. Now, masters, and um, let me see, can you show the whole screen very quickly, Anne? Uh, because it's, there's more than yes. Thank you. And what I'd like you to do is I'm going to be saying different things sometimes than, than the screen itself because I have a lot of information up here. But there are many reasons for you to learn from masters, and this is why we created this humanitarian mastermind. So I can bring you many of the masters that I know. I really encourage you to surround yourself with masters that have had lots of learning experiences in not only how to raise money, but also how to raise capital. Uh, we are going to be creating later a whole website that's going to be filled with resources for you to have the ability to go into some of our other Google Hangouts that we have had. We had one with Domingo Silvas where, he, where he's talking about raising capital. But I asked him please to also include things there about raising funds. And of course, Carrie Zurier goes into a lot of details on how to raise funds. But one of the things that I like you to do is I like you to really start thinking about people around you who are masters. And they have made a lot of mistakes. And with me, for instance, the masters, I didn't create the accelerated programs. I inherited them. I earned them. I worked very, very hard. And I was a partner from the beginning. I'm the one that set up all the systems in place. I set up the organizations from way back in 1979. And but the technology, the brilliance of it, was created by you know mentors of mine. One of them being Bobby Deporter, who created the Super Camp organization. And you have an opportunity for you to be able to see what she did with the team program. And then, of course, the gentleman, the very brilliant, smart man, Marshall Thurber, he is a brilliant uh, genius uh, in, in working with large organizations and setting up systems and things. So when they were ready, um, I worked with them for about six years. And when they were ready to, ret uh, to go on and do other things, Bobby Deporter left a lot earlier, but she was still our partner in the business school. She went on to create Supercamp and Quantum Learning. Uh, you can definitely look her up. Um, you know, and then when Marshall decided that he wanted to go work uh, with Edward Stemming and his consulting business in 1985, and I remember the date very clearly, July 8, 1985, I fully inherited this work. And, and so I had learned from them, but I also had learned from many other masters. And a lot of what I'm going to be covering right now are things that I had to learn and that you need to learn. You need to learn sales and marketing. I know, I know, I know. I, people say, how can I be considered to be a humanitarian? But let me tell you, when you're raising funds, when you are, any time that you're going to be asking people for money, you need to be completely congruent. And there are times when you're going to have to go back six times. You're constantly selling. You're selling your purpose. You're selling your vision, which you have to be very clear on. And you're also going to be selling them on the goals that you're going to create. I am not going to spend a lot of time talking about goals because there's fantastic technology out there. And goals is something that people have really, you know, covered in so many different places. They are brilliant, 
brilliant books. Even I always like to acknowledge Jack Canfield here, one of our top Money and You graduates, because Jack started out teaching goals programs. And look what he's done. He sold almost a billion chicken soup for the soul books. So goals are very important. And when you're raising capital and you're raising money and you are raising funds for your nonprofit, you need to let people know how, what goals you have, how you're going to reach that. The other one is people and organization. Now, for me, the toughest two things in this whole arena of any time you're building an organization is marketing and people. And notice that it says people and organization singular, not plural, meaning organizing yourself, getting organized. This is key, key, key. And if you're a bona fide um, nonprofit organization, you have a track record, you have proven that you're doing magnificent work out there, please send me an email and I will give you a code for you to download my Money Making Systems manual, which is a big fat manual, and also with uh, some great teachings for you on how to use it, and it's how to have Money Making Systems fun racing systems for you to work with people. Same thing in my mind. Believe me, I have worked with humanitarians for many, many years, decades and decades. It was my destiny from the time I was very young to be surrounded by people that were building organizations that really, really needed our support. I remember um, a wonderful gentleman also um, uh, over in uh, in Sydney, Australia, is never uh, never too late. It's never too late. Organization which is no longer existent, and um, Anna Anatol was just so beautiful in the way that he built it. And I remember he used to come to my program then called Nuts and Bolts of Organization, which is Money Making Systems now, and just taking so many notes, all of them, on how to build it. And I I'm covering some of those things right here today. And the last one, of course, is money and finances. And I want you to see the difference. Money is the actual thing, the that piece of paper, that coin, uh, that gold, uh, you know, the, the currency, uh, the, the, the means of exchange. And finances is the actual bookkeeping, the accounting the working with taxes, the working with due diligence, working with accountants, uh, with what we call in America CPA, certified um, public accountants. You know, these are people who are certified and they have different names in different countries. So I know we're very global, so we're speaking to people all over the world. And so whatever a certified accountant is called in your country, I mean, that's what I mean by finances. You have to have very good records. I mean, you see it sometimes in, you know, CNN, in the news. You hear about these people that took advantage of people. The first thing they do is they go look at your books. So you have to be very, very clear to keep a separation of what money you're spending. I have seen wonderful people, wonderful organizations that lost everything because they commingle the funds. You have to be very clear if you're going to go on vacation that that is not money that gets used for you even if you do raise money when you do. If you have some events there, then go ahead and maybe take a couple of days off there afterwards, but not if you're going on vacation and have some event there. That is not quite how it is not only looked upon by government agencies, and governments are the same all over the world, don't get me started talking about that, because I work all over the world, I work in China, <laughs> and uh, you know, I am a US citizen. So governments take this very, very serious, and there's, this is for you to take very, very serious. The first thing you need to do is to have an accounting of every single cent, every single penny, every single dollar, every single ringgit, every single yuan, every single whatever your currency is and what is done with that money. So now the money part is where you have to clear your blocks to deservability. In this one we could talk for hours and hours and we will 
I'm sure that we're going to end up having a humanitarian event together. I'm sure that I'm going to meet your money and you, where you will come and clear your blocks, and we will teach you the business success model experientially. But the thing is that I have been and have seen and have experienced many leaders in nonprofit organizations in tears because not only they didn't have the deservability level to ask for money or to continue to ask for it, which how else are you going to run your nonprofit? You need to have offices, you need to have paperwork, you need to have events, you need to attract wealthy people that will become your champions, that will give you, that will introduce you to amazing people, that will get behind you by throwing Christmas parties for you, uh, you know, Ramadan parties for you, uh, you know, uh, Deepa Valley parties for you, <laughs> just whatever, you know, just whatever your background is, you need to find a champion. I am your champion because I'm going to educate you. I am, that's what I'm going to do. And I want to ask you for a big favor. I get asked, a lot of people ask me all, daily, daily, daily for me to contribute to their organizations. I have a huge list. So I have a group of people that I consider supporting every year and then I, cons I, then I support them for that year and then I shift to others. But the way that I can give you the greatest wealth, the greatest riches, is education and what I'm doing for you. Okay? So now, as to money, if you have people in your core team, not volunteers that just come and help out, you, you don't have to worry about them because your volunteers are coming to give you what we call in business sweat equity. They're coming to help you out. They're volunteering their time. You don't have to worry about their money consciousness. You do have to worry about the money consciousness of the people that you are working with, your core team. And a lot of times, if you have a whole board of advisors or you have a whole board that's supporting you, depending on what type of profit or nonprofit organization, humanitarian organization you have, some of the most frustrating things sometimes for very wealthy people that join boards because they really believe in your cause sometimes is dealing with the lack of deservability on the leaders of the organization because they're not strong enough, they're not clear enough, and they can't raise the kind of money that is necessary to maintain the company. So you're constantly going to have to clearing, clearing, clearing that deservability. Okay, so those are the three major areas. Sales and marketing, people and organization, money and finances. Oh, and let me go back to marketing real quick. You want to make sure that you have some great marketers that are going to contribute to your organization so that you can go ahead and do all of the necessary marketing in order to continue to keep you out there. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. Great book that you need to read, Good to Great. This is by Jim Collins one of the greatest business books on the planet ever. I will let you know when I find one that's better than this one. It's so easy to read and it's about business but it, it completely applies to you. There are three circles that they, he teaches you. One of them is, well, it's like something that people are crazy about, something that your product, your service should be something that people rave about. Not talk about it, Ray. Like the other day, again, I was in a big event at the California Women's Conference. There were all this money in your graduates, and we were all talking with these people that had not done the program. All of them were raving about money in you. Not talking about it, raving. I mean, at one point, one of the people, you know, they saw me afterwards. They go, what are you doing that money in your program? Those people were raving about you. And I said, yes, and they have their own programs. And they love money in you. And that's why we've been around for over 35 years, because people love it so much. And we have really been able to survive and thrive through all these years, no matter how many seminars our graduates go out and create. You know, we have Harv Ecker, Robert Kiyosaki was my business partner for nine years of Rich Dad Poor Dad, Tony Robbins, you know, I trained him in logistics. My mentors trained him in, in many things. 
and that really supported him in being the big guy that he is now. I did his first planning chart when he was 23 years old, his first visualization on how big he was going to be. And you know, people like that, and they have gone on to create amazing organizations that could be considered our, um, our uh, competition, but I don't because they're my leverage, and we're going to talk about leverage here in a minute. So you want your people to rave about you, about your final product. The other one is something that you are absolutely passionate about. The other circle is what are you passionate about? And you better be passionate about you know, what you are really your cause. And believe me when I tell you, I have met people that were raising funds that got behind something that I think they thought they were going to be invited to the best parties in their town because when you have a successful nonprofit organization you will be invited to amazing places you know CNN may name you as the person of the year I mean there's a lot of prestigiousness but if you don't get into this for the right reason people will know so you better be passionate about it and the last one is having the last circle in the book, Good to Great, is having an economic engine, which many people fail in their beautiful causes. They are so beautiful. They, their hearts bleed. They, they want to feed the children. They want to stop sexual abuse. They want to go and support, you know, um, you know, children that are being beat up and drug addictions and the veterans and you name it, some of the most horrendous things on this planet, they're there to support but they don't have an economic engine and this is what I am going to be drilling you on, economic engine, you need to create that, so read the book, good to break. Okay, so let's go ahead and show the whole thing um, and thank you so much. Niche. A niche. You must have a niche. You must be unique. You have to be unique. And so I find that there are so many wonderful organizations out there. I support quite a few of them. And I keep an eye on the leaders and I keep an eye on the results and what is it that they're doing that somebody else is not doing. And this is really important for you to really um, be established on what is it that you're doing that's different than anybody else is doing? So let me just, I just want to just very quickly here, let me just very quickly, I want to look at something because I want to remember, I am going to my computer right now and one of the things that, uh, that, I, that I wanted you to know is that a niche, sometimes when I talk about this to people who have humanitarian organizations, they get a little bit crazy with me because they don't want to be thinking that they have to worry about niches. But you do, you do. Because one of the things, you have to be unique. You have to have added benefits to if somebody is like you, you have to have added benefits. You have to make, have a better organization, better marketing. And there's a high need in your community, in the world, for your wisdom, for your team, for your commitment, for your mission, your purpose that people will be willing to contribute to. You need to know that the name of the game is how are you going to raise funds. And I'm reading some of these things here because I want to make sure that I don't forget anything even though I created you know, these slides and I've been teaching this for 35 years. You really mean a lot to me and I am one of those detailed personalities that likes to do things the right way. The next step on the money and you business success model, which again I modify for you, is leverage. How are you going to leverage? And so you need to do market research. You're going to be leveraging your purpose and your mission and your goals. This is really important as a humanitarian organization. It's really important for you to know that. You need to, you're going to be using your resources, the networks that you can reach, the funds that you raise the people available to you and this is really important I put people separately from resources even though it falls under resources because you want to ultimately have systems in place so that you can leverage all those places systems is key say I love systems I love systems 
you have to say, I love systems so much. And I have a little joke. The way that I sell my money-making systems manual a lot in my business schools and in large audiences, because I'm not one to really do a lot of selling in from the front stages, I tell people, I said, how many of you have trouble sleeping? Raise your hand. You know, and there's always a handful. I said, buy this manual. And they all just look at me and I said, this is what you do. You put it by your bed and every night you read for about 10 minutes of money making systems. Guarantee you will be asleep in 10 minutes, if not five. And everybody laughs because systems are boring. My manual is boring. Unless you are <clears throat> the personality style, which I will be talking about here in a minute. There is some of us who love systems books. We like systems manual. I actually read certain manuals. I, I, I actually enjoy it. Not all of them, but some of them I do. So there are personality styles that do, but most people don't. So this is for you to work with your team. So don't think that systems are going to be exciting, except they're exciting because they will bring funds to you. And you need to take inventory of the resources that are available to you. You have to think of everybody and everything. This is why you also need to do a good sales course. And my friend Eric Lafholm, ericlafholm.com, he's a Money New graduate. He has one of the best sales training on the planet. I'm going to see that if he volunteers for him to come and do a little bit of training with you. He's really, really good with scripts. He has a lot of really good materials. He is a lot on Facebook, by the way, um, Facebook, DC Cordova Friends, uh, you know, you can find me in Twitter, and, and uh, oh, I even have a Flipboard magazine, which would be fantastic for you to have to show people what you do and things related to your cause. So if you go to dccordova.com, there's a whole list underneath of all the different uh, links for me and you will find my Flipboard magazines there and you go ahead and, and look up those and have a Flipboard online magazine. So take you know inventory of all the resources around you. So here's my favorite word, systems. I love systems. Systems are the thing that create wealth. Systems are going to be the thing that are going to bring automatic funds to you. Once you have enrolled people and you have sold them on your vision, they will be so happy to support you and your systems need to be in place. Now, I talk about this uh, with Carrie. Carrie and I talked about this and I want to, it's worth repeating here again, which is that I notice the people that have systems in place to personally call me up and thank me and acknowledge me for my contribution no matter how little it is. I know with certain organizations I only give maybe $50 a month, $100 a month, where well, that's $1,200 a year. Multiply that by quite a few organizations. It's a substantial amount of money that I give. And I can't just focus on one organization. I really, my heart is really connected to so many different people and it's not just children because I really believe that our children need to be educated in a whole other way. My heart bleeds for veterans because I love veterans. So many of my friends are veterans. There's a whole bunch of my friends didn't come back from Vietnam. You know, this is a very touchy subject for me. So I love that. I also go crazy with bullying. I get crazy with sexually, you know, abused children and people. So, you know, and also animals and things. So I need to, to feel not only good about writing the check, but maybe getting one call a year would be nice. And there are people that never call me. And even though I really believe in the causes, I notice that there is a part of me that kind of has to like make myself write that check. And I know it's my ego. I know it's my ego. I know that's what it is. But what you want to do is you want to have your systems in place so that you minimize people's egos as much as you can. I want you to really study this. Systems are the grease of organizations. One cannot build an organization without them. You need to document everything. Look, people cannot copy your spirit. They cannot copy who you are. 
they cannot copy your passion. There have been people that have attempted to copy me. Good luck. <laughs> it's like I, you know, I mean, they can copy all my good things and create their own organization, but I've actually had people that try to take my work and copy me, and it, it, that's impossible. Nobody can take your spirit. Nobody can take your personality, your enthusiasm, your passion for your work. That cannot be duplicated. That cannot be documented anywhere. But all the systems in place, and then later when you are getting ready to leave the organization and you want it to continue, then you begin to look for people, for that one person of that team that's going to replace you. Okay? So you need organizational, financial, fundraising, people, and you can start with my Money Making Systems Manual. Remember, just send me an email and <clears throat> I will give you a code so you can download it. And thank you. And think where you'll be in five years' time. Always think five years, five years, five years. Okay. <clears throat> the next step is align team. And actually, systems is part of align team. Systems is how you're going to create an align team. So an aligned team is clear about the purpose and mission, the policies, the rules of the game, the goals, and your valuable final service to be provided. What are you going to provide? What, what is it that you're going to be giving? Are you going to be taking doctors to places where there are no doctors? Are you going to be taking, like my friend Itzy, who is a great humanitarian? You know, she goes to the Philippines and takes a little Christmas box you know, child uh, for children that don't have anything. My garage is always full of little shoe boxes. Wherever I go, I pick up shoe boxes and go pick up shoe boxes. <laughs> and it's like, I love it. Every little box is going to be covered up and be filled with beautiful little things. It reminds me of how blessed I am. So you want to find champions like me that will support you not only sometimes financially, but also with sweat equity that will go pick up things for you. But that's, I know what's going to happen, and that's why I get so behind it, and that's what you need to tell your team, and your team needs to communicate that to the people that you're going to be raising funds from and going to come and volunteer for you. It can't just be you being sad in front of a room. I have seen that many times, and it has to be systematized. Now here we are, we're going to be talking about this profile. This is really important as we're talking about you creating an aligned team. I have another friend. Her name is Carol Dyson. She is a DISC master, D-I-S-C. And you can Google her. Her name is Carol Dyson. And again, you can email us, admin at accelerated.com, and we will connect you with her. And I'm going to see if she can come and do a training for you on the different personality styles. There's four of them, D-I-S-C, dominant, the driver, the D is the driver. I'm a driver. By the way, my name is Doris del Carmen Cordova Michelle. In the disc, I'm also a high D and a high C, which is so fascinating. I, I thought that was so funny. Anyway, I'm a driver, and this will explain to you a little bit later why I love systems so much. So I'm the one that opens doors, you know, I'm good at sales, I'm good at, I'm, I'm pretty balanced in all of them now. After doing this work for 35 years, I have trained myself, I have trained my, my brain on how to work all the different styles. Then the I is the influential, the inspirational, the chatty one, the one that loves to go to uh, networking events that will sit there you know, and love to sit at a convention and talking about your cause. I mean, they love talking. They love connecting. Their endorphins, their oxytoxins are just flying through the roof on women, you know, and men sometimes testosterone when they feel that they're saving you, they're saving the planet, they're saving the children, the, you know, they're saving the veterans. It's like you can see the chemical reactions in people's bodies. Remember, we are chemical beings. Not only are we emotional beings, it's all the chemicals that get created out of our, our thoughts and our beliefs. So the valuable finest service to be provided and the DISC profile on what is it that your team is excited about it and the high eyes can explain that. Then you have the S's, systems. 
the people that love systems. Everything has to be in order. Their desks are really neat. And then, of course, you have the C's, which I'm a lot a C. The C's, we are the quality controllers. If there's anything that your um, the people that you're raising funds from, your champions, your supporters are going to see, they're going to catch if there's something wrong. The high C's in your team will catch it before they do, and you can clean it up, you can correct it before the people do. And that's why we love high C's, and also we love to read manuals. <laughs> we love systems. So do the S's, but the high C's, they love it. And of course, we find every misspelling, we find every grammatical error, even though I am a foreigner, and you can hear my accent. I'm a foreigner in every country on the planet, just about. I carry a US passport, but I love traveling the world. But I was trained to be a court reporter. I was a very highly paid professional court reporter. And it was my job to see every that every punctuation, every single grammatical error, every dot, every I was you know dotted and every T was crossed. And there are many people like that. And if you don't have good materials, they will notice that. So everyone is clear in your organization about deservability because it has to be okay for them to receive funds. I have worked, I used to be a consultant in, in all kinds of different organizations. And I could tell when a team was not aligned and someone was guilty about money or didn't want to raise money for capital or raise money, raise funds for a cost. I could tell. So your team has to be very clear. And later, we will have a session for you where you will be clearing around money. OK. Uh, the next one, please. OK. So the next one is synergy. OK. Do we have the next one? OK, thank you so much. So synergy. Synergy is the, um, the really the unexpected results going beyond the ordinary, the combination of certain elements that creates greater strength. Synergy is the one where you have people that have no idea what they're doing, but they create amazing results. And that's the next one, and that's results. And I hope I'm not confusing you. Anne is helping me with this because I want to be able to just concentrate with you. So she's doing the slides for me. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> so patient with me. Anyway, so the results. In life and in your organization, you either have reasons for not reaching your goals or you will have the results that will speak for themselves and you will contribute to family, to community, to the world. And then the next one, Anne which will be the business success model. And you can see it here. So you start at the bottom. Masters, you learn from masters. You create a niche. You leverage that niche. Through an aligned team, you create synergy and you create results. Now, when you start coming to Money and You and our Accelerator Business Program, now we're going to be talking about money a lot. And so let's go ahead and go to the next slide which is, I'm going to be showing you some dollars here. These are US dollars, and my apologies that I don't have monies from other currencies. I was working on this and, and just kind of like rushing through it. I need, I believe me, I see all kinds of different currencies in there, not just US funds. And I know that the UK money is still a little bit higher. I tell you, those pounds are still ahead of us. Anyway, are you in the process of raising funds? You're just starting out. You're raising funds. You're getting, you know, up there. Are you? Did you raise funds now? And are you using the funds you raise optimally? Are you using it for the best? Do you have good budgets? Do you have good people that are helping you budget? This is where people make the biggest mistakes, and this is where people get upset with you, this is probably one of the most important slides in this presentation. And are you growing the extra funds? Now, this is such a fascinating one. I could talk about this for hours because I have worked with so many people that didn't want to grow the extra funds that they had. 
and there are all kinds of people that will advise you and this is where you want to have a, a group of people that support you, a board of advisors, depending on how you set up your foundation, depending on how you set it up, who's going to be working with you but you know the real good ones always have people who are very wealthy who really understand money and sometimes we have a little bit of resistance of taking some of that money and growing it. Of course you have to have the, all the right uh, resolutions in place, all the right bylaws, you have to have the type of organization that can do that, you have to have the approval of your big funders. I know that there are many legal details for you to be doing that, but you need to, in some organization, it's important for you to really consider on growing the extra funds that you have so that you can go ahead and have more money and then of course constantly bringing in sponsors and again we are going to be bringing someone that will be helping you with sponsorships and that will be teaching you many wonderful things around it. You're going to have a whole business school for humanitarians and of course this can also help you in your own personal business if you have it. This is the great thing about being a humanitarian and doing this course and doing this program is that you get that particular benefit and you really need to consider in order to grow your organization and the next one and is for you to go global. Now when I was doing this slideshow I was thinking okay do I leave this in? Do I take it out? Do I leave this in? Do I take it out? And Spirit told me to leave it in because you want your organization to go global. Now I know that many of you have your, some of you are local, no question about that, but some of you have really been able to expand. You've been asked by people around the world to help them out with the same challenges. And so, of course, you now need to grow. But there have been so many mistakes that have been made in this area. And let me just take a little drink of water. Thank you. Thank you. And I tell you what, what we got to do is I got to go over with you on how to expand globally because I have seen in my decades of doing entrepreneurial education the most wonderful humanitarians that literally got their organization taken from underneath them and it really hurt them. It hurt them reputation wise, it hurt them emotionally some of them never recuperated. I can think of a couple that were so upset and so dismayed they pretty much gave up. The other organizations continue for a little while but any time that you start something out of integrity, don't worry. It's not going to grow. It is not our job for us to be the ethics officer of the universe. You know, I really truly believe in the law of karma and I believe that you know if you take something without someone's permission but in order for you to prevent all of that I want to go through how to be how to grow a global organization and this is very important for you to understand so let's go to the next slide which is consult with experts and let's just go ahead and show the whole slide uh, and thank you so much so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and consult with experts. And what your experts are going to do, they're going to teach you the acceptable structures in foreign markets. Every country is different. There are different rules. Taxes range widely depending on location and regions. I have heard of some very interesting laws in different countries that I really don't have time to go over and it's not necessary. But, you know, the, again, this, is, this particular educational series is being seen all over the world, so you must do your research. Okay? Not in, uh, not all, not in all nonprofit organization taxes may be deducted. Now, again, I'm going by memory of some interesting countries. You need to do your research, including what legal protections are available to you personally and the organization what they call in business risk mitigation. And I don't want to go into a lot of detail about this, but remember I was a court reporter and I was 
a an official court reporter in the criminal courts system of Los Angeles and Hawaii and I saw things in there I saw people go to jail for some very interesting things that all of us knew that this person never intended didn't mean it but guess what they broke the law and ended up in jail so we want to make sure that you're very clear don't be afraid it, ask those questions that you feel really uncomfortable asking. You also, part of this, you need to consult with experts on contracts with vendors. There are many things that you are going to be, uh, you know, really being given to you, you know, and that you are going to be uh, provided. What happens if you're given a whole bunch of bags? It's like um, I, ha I have a wonderful friend um, who has a beautiful organization in Cambodia where she has a business, uh, a bag business, um, and beautiful uh, plastic bags. And I, I and one artist, Faro, uh, is her name. Um, anyway, art artist, um, you know, is doing this magnificent work. And she had all these beautiful bags, and she did give me a bag what, before she started her business. She gave me a bag, and I felt comfortable with that. Once she started her, her business, which she's working with a lot of people, and, and she, has, she has created a nonprofit, I bought a bag from her that I like, that I love, that I carry with me, that I use. I felt in integrity buying that bag, and then I also show it to people and then if people want to go buy from her, I get no commissions. I'm very, very clear. I don't need to get anything. I'm just supporting. So it's my own way of me feeling in complete integrity. I was supporting the organization. I also, she left behind some sample bags, and I have introduced her now to some great people. And those particular bags I don't use. I carry them with me everywhere to show them as samples. So I am very clear on the on on the line. It's either I'm doing nonprofit work or am I being given gifts? And of course it's, it's nice, of course, to be given gifts. But you have to be very clear on what those gifts are. And I like to be very clear when I give things to. So this is very important. Just remember that and you will stay out of hot water. How to open countries. And, and you're going to have this so you can listen to this again and again. You Google international organizations similar to yours. You look through social media sites. You start joining those groups. Make contacts and let them know who you are and your mission and your purpose. Decide what countries you want to expand into. Call the Trade Commission office of that country and begin to learn and research for nonprofit organizations, for foundations, for your causes. You know, contact associations and see if they can have you there. And uh, use the same skills that you use for networking locally to expand globally. Okay? The next one, the next slide is get started and have a global organization. Be prepared to start preliminary conversations with all the necessary paperwork. The rules for business for for profit and nonprofit organizations apply globally. They are just different rules. Okay? Work with, in other words, they every country works differently, but they all have rules. Okay? They have rules for businesses, they have rules for foundations. So they are different rules from country to country to country. I remember I spent nearly 10 years, 9 years in Australia. And Australia and New Zealand are very close to each other. And I remember how people used to say, oh, oh, you know, no worries, mate. You know, it's very similar, you know, very similar, you know, New Zealand and Australia. When I started doing my due diligence, they're two completely different countries. They have many different rules, very differently. And so, you know, just because they kind of might look alike to you because you're not familiar with the accents, you're not familiar with certain things, mm -mm, completely different countries, okay? Work with an experienced international business consultant attorney that's familiar with global rules of the game and can guide you to expand your organization for ultimate leverage 
which of course is going to support you in being around for decades to go. How to get started in setting up relationships. And again, I want you to come back and take some really good notes in here. That was the next slide. Thank you. And offer a simple memo, MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, recapping all the points, the topics you have had in conversations and in meetings. Have potential partners sign a non-disclosure, non-compete agreement. And here we are. Now I've had this conversation dozens and dozens of times. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about here. When people say, well, this doesn't make any sense. Why would I want to do that? I want people to go out and really expand my vision. Yes, you do. You do want them. But playing with rules of the game that you have set in place. Because if they don't do it correctly and they use your name or you have the type of thing where you may have license and they start doing their own thing and don't have the level of ethics, the level of integrity that you have, it could be tricky. So this is really important. Start with small agreements, small events, test the ground. It's crucial to meet in person. A lot of times people you know, are so in a hurry to start expanding. They begin to do things through the internet, you know, emails, and don't see the person. You have to meet them. And uh, will you be the communication point or assign representatives, people that work for you? Will you train the organization, license your program services? The bottom line, total clarity on your and the organizational models and see how they can, you, they can overlap, they can work together, but you must have this, what I call a little bit of a tough conversation. Your first meeting, have a powerful, concise conversation ready. Your enrollment conversation to include your higher purpose. Big pictures about your intention, your past results. You acknowledge, you invite, you give. Once you have decided to work together, prepare an MOU to start. More comprehensive legal agreements can be worked on as you grow. And you will need comprehensive legal agreements. And uh, you know, this is one of my favorite. Everybody knows that I teach this everywhere. How to have global business cards. That includes you. Now this is a genuine, genuine expense. And you use your global business card for raising capital. I have seen people that have given me uh, cards that were for their nonprofit, for their foundation, and then they wanted to do business with me. And I would, I actually ask, and I said, "May I please see your business card?" And they say, "Well, this is you can just use this card." And you know, here's my phone number, here's my address, and I'm very, very, I'm a stickler because I'm a systems person. And I said, "Well, I think you better create your own business cards for your own business." This is separate. So just remember, you have your own for each. OK, now this is an interesting one, because this is part of my presentation on how to open up and become a global entrepreneur. And again, I just had the sense that I was given to leave this here. Now, gift given is key. This is going to sound a little bit contra contrary to what I've been saying. Be careful how you give gifts to people. Well. We're not talking about big gifts now. We're talking about little tiny gifts. You never show up to anybody, and for me, nowhere do I like to show up without giving a gift. A little tiny, teeny gift sometimes. It's just, it's the South American way, and it works really, really well. It's just little things. You know, you can be a little. Something that you bring from your country. Uh, people love food. They love certain things. They love um, books and magazines. And when I'm teaching global entrepreneurship, a lot of times they're very wealthy. I mean, what do you give a person that's a billionaire? You know, education, information about their business, about their industry, about, about people, introductions to people that they may do business with. So, it's like when you're opening up new countries, it's okay for you to give gifts, and they are key. And um, and you know, and little things like pen. And I always like to include to make sure that you know that in China you don't write in red. Long story. I, my brain kind of went crazy because everything is red and gold. And I was like, what do you mean you don't write in red? Well, you just don't write in, in, in any of your books or anything in red. Just use black or blue or any other color. OK, so I had to include, before we start closing up, 
I had to include my definition of wealth, the access to resources that you need, influential people, networks, funds, locally and globally. I created my own definition of wealth. For those of you who are in profitable businesses and have seen this presentation, you know that mine is a little bit different than one for profitable business, but it's the same. It's the access to resources that you need. When you have a profitable business, it's a little bit different, but for those of us and those of you that are creating foundation, this is what you need. And then these are words of encouragement to you. Expanding globally allows you to make a difference worldwide. And I left my little money world there because I really want to imbue in you the importance. If you're going to be a profitable humanitarian organization, you must be clear about money and finances and wealth and clearing. Okay, and the last two, I'd like to leave you with this wish, wishing you tremendous fulfillment, peace, of course you'll have peace, you do beautiful work, joy, of course you'll have joy, and prosperity as you grow your organization locally and globally. I want to thank you, my whole team, my whole, all of us want to thank you for your contribution to make this world better. And the last one is we're committed to your success. Download the four session business makeover to learn more distinctions and that's moneyandyou.com. You'll see it there. If it's no longer there, send us an email and we'll send you an old link somewhere. You know, these things stay in the internet forever. We, we save our pages. I can send you a page that will upload those. And then any questions I've been telling you, you can write to admin at accelerated.com. Now, what I would like to do, and this is so interesting because it's coming to me to do this, and you can leave uh, that slide up there, but and I wanted to ask you, you are a Money and You graduate, and you are such a wonderful human being. You've been listening to all of this. It's just the two of us on this particular, um, you know, presentation. Is there anything you would like to add? Is there any suggestions? You know, and I know how beautiful you look. And if you feel okay to come in online, I know that you are uh, a real beauty. Thank you so much. Annie is a Money and You graduate, and she has been supporting us. Thank you so much. Is there anything that I left out? You know, this is not about ego. Is there anything really important that you would like to add uh, to this wonderful group of people around the world that for decades they're going to be watching this? You know, we're going to be, I'm going to be 80 years old then, and people are still going to be seeing my beauty in my early 60s. <laughs> And uh, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, actually, I want to thank you for all this great information because uh, you got me thinking a lot about, you know, me contributing to nonprofits from a whole different perspective. There were so many things that I learned from it. So this is very content rich. Thank you for that. The only thing that I would like to add is, um, you know, in my arena, when you are getting out there and making a difference, share in, in your marketing section, share real life stories, share what's going on, share pictures, share videos, and have people, you know, um, talk about the difference you have made. Because a lot of times when people are asking us to donate, we, we get the picture we understand, but we don't really realize the impact that little bit, you know, or a lot, whatever it may be, that we're donating, whether it's money or our time, it can have a huge impact on people's lives. And that's why when we're watching some of those amazing commercials where they show, okay, you know, five dollars can feed a family for a month. It's like, really? Really? This five dollars that I buy coffee with can feed a family for a month? It actually gets you to thinking. And there's, uh, there's even one uh, recently I saw that uh, about giving blood, how somebody took one hour to go and you know, donated blood and they saved the lives of these twins. So the impact that we have on people's lives is just crucial. And as, as you were describing, DC, all the things that you're doing, because I know you for a long time and being a Money and You graduate, 
I know how it works and I see the difference you make in people's lives because you're everywhere and people listen to you because everything you say makes sense, the advice that you're giving and now I know because you have the system component to it and which I love by the way because I used to set up quality assurance systems myself. So we have that in common but it's your heart and the way you give it. The genuine loving and caring comes through and that's what's so magnetic. So my advice would be just copy what DC is doing. You know, just get out there and put your passion in what you're doing and uh, things fall into place because people always recognize, you know, somebody who's not passionate or the integrity in, in what they're doing. And uh, the story that, you know, you said is people sometimes join because they want to be invited to the biggest parties. Well, yeah, but you're always invited to the biggest part. As a matter of fact, I know that you can't even go to all of them. So you're inviting other people to go with you or give away the tickets to represent. You know, it's not about going to the party. It's about representing yes. you know, that organization by a money and you graduate, by somebody, whether or not a graduate, somebody who's in integrity, who is in support. So you never miss an opportunity to add value, and that's what makes it so much fun because the passion that you have is one thing but that's why people are around you like you were saying you're at an event you're being followed and everybody's like what is money in you who are you what is it that you do and that's because of the impact that you make you don't see anybody as competition it's all we're all one we're all looking to help each other and um, you know as I watch you I'm learning how to set my business up better I'm not set up as a nonprofit, but I can do a lot of good. I can donate my time and resources, and I don't, you know, and, and it feels really good. So uh, it's everything that you're saying, I'm actually applying to myself in my business without being a nonprofit. So, and this is why I, I see why you're attracting people. And the bottom line is that everything that works for a for profit business, which DC, you know, so much about. You know, you can implement those amazing strategies and systems for a nonprofit and just follow what you're doing. Well, I'm going to be taking a much closer look at everything I do. So thank you. I just want to thank you for sharing this. I came on board to, to help out, but I got so much out of it. And that's what always happens, isn't it? Yes, yes. And and one of the things that I was, I was going to say, and thank you earlier, because we are going to be, you know, choosing that one organization that I will know very well in my brain. I know so many for us to be part of your television program and I want to thank you in advance because I know that you're going to be teaching us a lot and um, and, and one of the things that I want to do is, you know, we are going to have even the Money and You show and then, you know, we'll bring in, you know, the different people. But one of the things that I just wanted to say, I started getting emotional uh, when you were talking about the children. And what was so interesting, uh, the other day we had a our first San Diego luncheon with Lynn Twist. Lynn Twist is of Pachamama.org and Lynn Twist was the person responsible for introducing Buckminster Fuller to Werner Earhart in 1976. She introduced him and um, and Buckminster Fuller is our mentor. You can Google him or you can go to moneyandyou.com forward slash Buckminster dash Fuller. You will have more resources than you ever wanted to ever see. And, and it was out of that conversation, they were supposed to meet for two hours. And I believe they ended up meeting for six weeks. Lynn Twist is also in uh, moneyandyouradio.com. That's when I discovered that. I interview Lynn Twist. You must listen to her. And Lynn Twist has the ability to raise capital and raise funds for Pachamama, which is a global organization that's affecting all of us. It's the first country to have a constitution that includes Mother Earth. Pachamama is the Hispanic, the Achuar, Indian word for uh, for the earth, for for the planet. And when I get around Lynn, because she was my role model when I was 27 years old, and it was out of an assignment that I had when the Hunger Project first started, 
and I had the opportunity to see Werner Earhart and Bud Mr. Fuller together. And Lynn Twist was like in the background. I didn't get to meet her until only about eight years ago, nine years ago. I saw her, but I didn't. She wasn't my friend. And and what happened was that she inspired me so much. She is the essence of just what giving is. You know, all of us want to grow up to be Lynn Twist. Mm -hmm. And when she was doing her luncheon the other day, I had the opportunity to meet with her a couple of days later and drove her to the airport. And when I was with her, um, having sharing a little meal before she got on the plane, I was talking to her and I went back to the commitment that I made to like Mr. Fuller himself when I was 28 years old and I said, Bucky, you don't have to worry. No matter what happens to you, I am committed to eradicating poverty and hunger. I never want to see another child suffering like that because of something that I can do. If there's anything I can do, I'm going to do it. And it was such an overwhelming thing at the time because we had anywhere between 45,000, 44,000. They it, that was the minimum figure, 45,000 a day, mostly children that people were dying then in 1977, 78, up to possibly nearly 80,000. I mean, we didn't know the numbers; we just knew that there was an outrageous number. And one of the things that occurred for me was when I was with Lynn. I went back to the moment when I made the decision and then when I was actually speaking to Bucky. I wanted him to relax. I wanted him to leave this world in peace. That if there was one person that was going to do it, it was going to be me. But what I got so emotional about with Lynn the other day, and I get emotional just thinking about it right now, is that that commitment, that fire lives within me. And the Great Spirit kind of puts out the red carpet for you to follow it. And you can have the most magnificent life. And all the next steps, you will know what to do, you will know what to do, you will know what to do. And it's a trust issue that occurs between you and your Creator. And even if you don't believe in a greater power, I have met some wonderful humanitarians that didn't believe in God, that didn't believe in anything. They just did this work because they had the ability to do it and they could do it. So I just want you to know that I have met the most beautiful humanitarians that were not God people, which is totally so fine. It's so totally okay. But for those of us that believe in a greater power, just trust that everything that you're doing has a purpose. It has a reason. And there's so many of us that are here to help you. And you just have to trust the process. And I want to thank you, and thank you, Anne, and I want to thank all of you watching this for your commitment, for your partnership, and us creating a world that works for everyone, for your partnership in not having one little child that we'll ever have to see on television again, those cute little, little tiny baby beings all over this planet. What we want is for them to have an opportunity to be able to be educated, to have enough to eat, enough clean water, clean medicines, a little roof over their heads, and some way for them to get educated. And it is that vision that will continue to keep me going, to keep you going, and to keep many of us going, because there's nothing that brings me more joy than to be sharing, you know, this this Beautiful vision for all of us, and thank you so very much. And hang in there. This is when, on the tough days, this is when you have to remember. It's those tough days when you want to quit, when you don't think you can do one more thing, you have to remember that vision. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne, and thank you, Bucky, and thank you to all my great mentors and every single person participating in the series and every person in the background that is supporting the series that you may never meet. Aloha, thank you, thank you so much.